Welcome to Casual Friday here on Digital Charcuterie. It's Friday and we're casual together. I'm very happy that you can join us. Um, it's It's been quite a ride of a week. Lots of stuff has been happening this week. Um, most of it has been strike related. That's kind of what I've been paying attention to, if we're being honest. Uh, any new announcements and things like that, I've just been ignoring because as far as I'm concerned, nothing exists until we pay our writers and actors. But here we are on a Friday, and I wanted to get casual with some of you and answer some fan emails. So that's what we're going to do right now. And one of these um, is kind of a long-awaited email that I didn't get around to for a long time, and I apologize because it's just been a hectic summer, but I am going to answer that question. But first of all, we have a fan question here from Deshaun, and Deshaun wants to know, uh, with Secret Invasion not getting very many views, Will we be lost or not when we watch Secret Wars? Uh, good question, Deshaun. Um, the inevitably, Secret Wars is going to be a big deal, right? Secret Wars is the end game of the multiverse saga. We have pretty much had that all but confirmed by the Feigster, and yes, that's what I call him now. Starting right this moment, me and him were like that. He calls me the fanster. I call him the fogster. We have a great time together. Uh, Secret Wars is, is the big granddaddy of this whole darn multiverse saga. So it stands to reason that it's going to tie into everything the same way that Infinity War tied into everything. Um, will we be lost if we don't watch Secret Invasion? Well... That depends, Deshaun. That depends. If somebody watched, let's say, Infinity War and they didn't watch Thor The Dark World, would they be lost? Maybe only for that one little scene where Natalie Portman was in Asgard. They might be like, what's going on here? Why is Thor sad about his mom? Um, you know, it's a little thing like that that doesn't occupy all of Endgame, but it's still something where they might be like, hmm, I don't understand what's going on here, but I'm going to assume it's from one of the things I didn't watch. And I think that's what we're going to see happen with Secret Wars. Uh, a lot of people are choosing to, a lot of smart people uh, are choosing to skip out on things. And I say that they're smart people because there's, you know, still that strange subset of Twitter folk who watch everything just so they can bash it. Uh, and say, oh, I hate this. Why do I have to watch so much? You don't have to watch so much. You don't have to watch anything. So some people with more common sense than that are like, hmm, this secret invasion show looks like it's not for me. I'm going to skip it. I'm good. And that's cool. Uh, and those people are, if they watch Secret Wars, they're, if a scroll shows up, they're probably going to think, well, this scroll part of this film must have something to do with that show I skipped, but honestly, I don't care. I'm enjoying the other three hours and 57 minutes of this movie, so I'm fine. Uh, and they're going to have a grand old time. Same way somebody could have watched Endgame, not known what was happening with Asgard and Jane Foster, but the rest of the movie, they were like, yeah, I love this. They still enjoyed themselves immensely. Uh, so to answer your question, no, I don't think it's going to be a case of people being lost and I mean, we talked about this uh, in a lot of detail on our podcast uh, here on the Digital Charcuterie Network on the Infinity Rewatch podcast, Ryan and myself. Ryan is the Marvel man. If you guys are Marvel fans and you are not listening to us on the Infinity Rewatch podcast, Ryan can tell you things about the Marvel Universe that even Stan Lee would have been like, wait a minute, what's that? Did I make that? Ryan knows it all. He's, he's the best. Uh, so we, we have a lot of fun on that show, and we go into detail about every episode of every Marvel show. And uh, our general thoughts of Secret Invasion was that it's just like this little footnote story that we don't think is going to have huge consequences um, down the line, uh, at least none that are going to make as big an impact as people seem to think everything will, right? Uh, the biggest impact of Secret Invasion, spoilers if you haven't watched it, you've been warned right now. Ready? I'm going to spoil something. The biggest impact of Secret Invasion is that Maria Hill is dead. There, that's literally, there's other small things that they can definitely start to work with in the future, but 
the biggest thing that has changed for me in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, thanks to this show, is there's no more Maria Hill, RIP, right? So we are living in a post-Hill world and everything else that the show has touched, we'll see trickles of it because we see trickles of it, of everything, everything that Marvel does, we see trickles of it in future projects. That's how it works. They play the long game, but you're not gonna be lost watching Secret Wars, I promise, because that movie has, is gonna have so much cool stuff packed into it, you know, in 2036 when it finally comes out. It's gonna have so much cool stuff packed into it that the tiny sliver of a micro, of a fraction of it that will have anything to do with what the scrolls did here, it's just gonna get washed up in the sea of greatness that that film is gonna give us. So Deshaun, you got nothing to fear if you skipped the show. Neither does anybody else who skipped the show. Thank you for your question. And this next question is the one that I have taken way too long to answer and I apologize, um, but it's it's answering, it's, the answer's coming right now. This question comes from Thibaut Reyes. Thibaut, you asked, what do you know of the Green Lantern show and how do you think Guy Gardner will fit into it? Um, you asked this question like 12 days ago. I'm so sorry, we're only getting to it now. I missed it on the last Casual Friday because I couldn't do last Casual Friday. Thibaut, um, thank you for writing in. Green Lantern, uh, as you may or may not know, I've talked about it before, is the DC story, the DC world that is nearest and dearest to my heart, at least when it comes to the comics. Those are the only DC comics that I really like got into. I really like the Green Lantern world and I'm excited to finally see it explored. And this show, if it exists, yeah, it's because really we don't know what's gonna exist because strike, um, because greed rather, the strike is not the bad thing, it's the greed that caused the strike. But the Green Lantern show, if it comes out, I think it's a safe bet, Tebow, that not only will Guy Gardner be involved in the show, but I'm gonna go ahead and say right now that it is almost a sure bet he's going to be the main character. Okay, and here's why. I don't mean this as any offense to Nathan Fillion. I love the guy, Nathan Fillion's great. Okay, I, this is not a dig at Nathan Fillion, but in the world of actors, there are two different kinds of actors. There are movie actors and there are TV actors. Uh, and the line between them has been blurred over the past, you know, two decades. Really, in the 21st century, we really started blurring those lines, which is a good thing. But before that, particularly, you know, 80s and 90s, if you were a TV actor, if you were an actor, you could have been the lead role in the biggest TV show on planet Earth, but you were still looked down upon, unfortunately, by actors who were in motion pictures. That's how it worked, right? But Julia Roberts was an actor who did movies. So you would never see Julia Roberts show up on TV, even if it was like in a show everybody was watching, like Dynasty or whatever, the Cosby show. It was considered beneath them. And a TV actor would almost never uh, find themselves leading a movie unless, you know, the stars all lined up and it was somebody like George Clooney right, who started off in ER and then became a movie star. He's the exception, not the rule. So even though that is not so much the case anymore, there's not really that big of a class distinction between actors, thankfully, because that's kind of a gross way for people in the same field of work to look at each other. Uh, it does still kind of exist, right? It does still kind of exist. Um, and when it comes to, uh, like, for example, look at Star Wars. All right, we can look at Star Wars. Um, actually, no, scratch that. Don't look at Star Wars. Let's look at Marvel, okay? Because we're kind of talking comic booky stuff here anyway. Um, let's say Captain America never went back in time, and let's say Iron Man never died, right? Let's say that. Tony Stark and Steve Rogers continued after Endgame and they were still part of 
the Avengers after that, you would still not see Robert Downey Jr. or Chris Evans in the Disney Plus shows. And the reason why is because those guys are on that mega level movie star tier, which again, I don't like saying because it sounds like I'm putting them on that pedestal. I'm not. I don't like that pedestal. It just, it exists. I'm just stating that fact. Um, so because that distinction is still kind of there, uh, you wouldn't get to see them in Disney Plus shows. Uh, so that's why Disney Plus shows would focus on either characters that you've never met before, like Miss Marvel or Moon Knight or what have you. Um, but they would also just fill up the space with other characters who were not as big, played by other actors who were not as big names. Even though that's not the best example, I know, because Disney Plus does kind of toe the line a bit and you do get huge actors like Oscar Isaac uh, show up in these shows, right? So it's not the strongest example that I could have made, unfortunately, but uh, when it comes to the Green Lantern show, to bring it back around to that, Tebow, Guy Gardner, not only is he a steadfast sort of member of the Green Lantern Corps, which is what the show's going to be about. It's going to be about the Corps. Uh, he's being played, we know now, by Nathan Fillion, who is, at the end of the day, one of those actors who's considered TV level. I mean, that's where he cut his teeth. He's a TV guy. He's known for Firefly. He's known for Castle. He's known for The Rookie, right? The only movie I can think of where he had a starring role was Serenity, and that's based off the TV show he was on. So he's going to show up in the Superman movie to set the stage for himself and set the stage for this show, and then that show's going to come out, and I guarantee you, my friends, he'll be leading the show. He will be front and center, the main protagonist protagonist because it's Guy Gardner and he's an asshole. We've established that. But the main protagonist of the Green Lantern Corps show and whatever they do with the Green Lantern movie, whether it's Hal Jordan or I hope like John Stewart or Jessica Cruz or Kyle Rayner or whoever, they're going to cast an actor who is more movie caliber. Uh, and that's unfortunate because again, I'm not, I don't have anything against Nathan Fillion and I would love to see him headline a movie that is not just Serenity. But that's unfortunately the way the industry works. They want to put butts in the seats by showing them a name that they know, that they're familiar with. And I know that doesn't make sense because a lot of people now know Nathan Fillion from Castle, from Rookie, but that's the way Hollywood executives think. If they don't know them from another big blockbuster movie, why would they want to go see them in this big blockbuster movie? It's a backwards way of thinking, but here we are on a strike because of these people. So why would that surprise you? So Tebow, uh, you are definitely going to see Guy Gardner leading the Green Lantern Corps show. That is a given, especially because most of the Green Lanterns in the Green Lantern Corps stories, at least the ones I know of, are not human, right? They're aliens. You got characters like Salak and Kilowog and uh, Aresia and Saranic, not too, right? They're, they're not human people. They're, they're going to have alien makeup and stuff on them. So I doubt, even though it's James Gunn leading everything and he's a brave guy and he goes outside the box, I doubt WB is going to want to, uh, like I doubt they're going to be brave enough to sell a show where the main character is not a human looking person. So they're going to put a human Green Lantern front and center. Guy Gardner is the perfect choice. Maybe they'll throw in Jessica Cruz so they have a female lead, right? Because she's new too. She's a newer Green Lantern, so she's hot. She's popular. Uh, so they might do that, partner them up like a buddy cop thing. Um, but that's what you're going to see. You're going to see Nathan Fillion headlining that show. They're just using Superman Legacy as a platform to get in there. Uh, but that's at least what I would put my money on. I could be completely wrong. And we show up and that Green Lantern Corps series is about like, I don't know, Bizarro or something. Who knows? I would love that. I know James would love that. Uh, mm. But that has been Casual Friday for today. Uh, I want to thank everybody 
for watching. I want to thank everybody for writing in and asking me these fun questions. I love answering them. I love seeing the fan emails and having that back and forth with you guys. Um, I know we're all looking forward to all these great things. Even just yesterday, uh, that announcement came out about the Lando show actually is going to still be a thing and that Donald Glover and his brother are going to work together to produce it. I will just reserve my excitement until I can press play on Disney Plus because that is uh, that is the new setting that I am at with Star Wars. No announcement is going to get me invested because they've lost that right. So I got to wait until it's just there for me to watch and then I can be like, okay, I'm excited because that's that's how I will be. When any Star Wars gets put in front of me, I'll be like, ooh, yes, please. But until it's put in front of me, I can't because they've hurt me. They've hurt me too many times with their fake promises and fake announcements. Oh, it's awful. So that's where I'm at. But the Lando show is going to exist. But we're all we're all in this weird spot right now where we have to remember nothing is going to exist. Not a thing. Until the executives at every studio that is not a24 because they're the only ones with human decency it seems get their act together and the strike by paying their writers and actors what they're worth and the reason i keep bringing this up and sound like broken records because that's what i do i i write and i act too so i want you know i want my my people out there to get what they deserve so that one day i can be part of that as well right um so keep hoping keep your fingers crossed that terms of agreement are reached and that they're fair and equitable. And then we can finally start getting all of this great stuff that we're looking forward to. Because guys, we were less than a year out from Deadpool 3 and that was so exciting. And now who knows when the hell that's gonna come out. So let's keep our, our excitement there because that's what I love about us is how, how much we look forward to these things. But we gotta remember, they're going to be delayed. That's, that's just what it is. Um, and until we finally do get them, you're always welcome back here to talk with us about it on Digital Charcuterie. So until next time, my friends, thank you so much for watching on Casual Friday. And may you all be the masters of your own universe.